Thank you for joining me tonight, tonight, Melissa. Now, how do you pronounce your surname? Chimay. Chimay. Where does that come from? Is that a, is that an Irish name? It's I married an Italian, but uh, an American, but the name's Italian. How are you? Good, good. I had I'm busy, very busy since the video came <clears> out. <throat> um, a lot of messages and. I said this before. I think if I had put out that video 12 months ago, it would have got um, maybe 200 views. But because people now are so aware that they're looking for answers and they know that the answer is always money and control, that it's now resonating with a lot of people because the whole medical narrative is unraveling. It can only not make sense for so long before people start asking questions about what's really going on. And are you talking specifically there about the Iconocast video? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have you were, watched. You were it. very, you were very good, Melissa. <laughs> very good. It's what a lot of people are saying, but um, I guess I have a way of breaking it down and making it palatable to everybody. Because a lot of times things are overcomplicated, especially with economics, and they don't need to be. They're deliberately complicated. So when you pull everything together and apply it to money, it starts to make sense. It was quite a raw video. I mean, it was you're quite a straight shooter. Yeah, I had done a round table before um, with um, TDs and doctors, and and I I spoke briefly in it. And um, Dave from Ryland Media told me like the room went quiet when I started talking because none of it was making sense. And when I started talking it started to make sense what was really going on. So when he got me back down, he said, okay, it's brick to the face time, you know, no more information, just put it out there. So um, that's what I did. And I think, well, 25, um, I was told 25% of, it was taken down after six days with like half a million views. 25% um, of those were from Australia and then a high percentage from New Zealand. So you have to realize these people are living it right now. What I'm talking about is where we're heading. That's where they're living right now. I've talked to quite a few people from Australia. I think from the 17th of December, 90% of shops will not grant you access if you haven't been double vaxxed. And that doesn't make sense within the medical framework of it being doesn't stop you from getting, doesn't stop you from passing it on. It's merely a, a treatment. It, it's supposed to be a treatment to reduce symptoms. That's what it's claimed to be. You, you that, mean the, 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 the jab itself as yes. opposed to the passport? Yeah. Yeah. So that's so there's you can't attribute the passport to any medical cause. Because Absolutely. 100 percent. It doesn't reduce transmission. So if it doesn't trans reduce transmission, what are these passports actually about? Well, it's a precursor because you, to the digital ID, which the end game is central bank digital currency tied with a social credits and a carbon credits system. Right now, they're psychologically prepping everybody that if they want to take part in any transaction, they have to have a QR code. And that's just going to switch into um, a financial QR code. They've already been working on this um, in Northern Ireland they have its um, the Encompass program with its Epic software, where it's all your social and medical details in one place. Now, in that app or in th that database, there's provisions for all your financial details, all of your criminal mm -hmm. records, and your license. So they're already putting the whole infrastructure into place. Now, then they'll get it onto an app. It'll, the app will combine all your financial and all your medical details. Now, why would they want that all in one place? Well, obviously, they're moving into a social credits, carbon credit system, because the reason anybody who has followed what's really going on for a long time knows that it's always been a tiptoe, so you could never really point it out. This time, it's like there's a race towards the end. And the people that are aware of what's going on can't figure out why it's a race towards the end. But when you frame everything in the context of um, a financial collapse, then it makes sense because their control over the population is from money printing. They print money from nothing yep. and get us to work for it, which has been great for them. 
that has collapsed now. So when that veil falls, their control over the population is gone. And they're either going to have to tether to something real again, which they don't want to do, uh, or they can bring in a new system where instead of it being a consumer economy, we're moving into um, a control economy where you have to be obedient. Um, the social credit system, if anybody looks at what's going on in China, if you speak out against, there's a billionaire in China who spoke out against the Communist Party who just was disappeared for months and then come back penniless. They have complete control over you. This is the only thing that they, this is the only thing that they have in place because the current money system three percent to three percent is real. The other 97, 98 percent is generated from debt. This is why they had us so consumeristic because the economy was growing based on the more debt that they could create, the bigger the economy grew, the more money that they made. And they got more and more creative with ways of um, generating debt. In even the fact that um, I remember the first time I went to America in, oh gosh, about 1996, I remember everybody had car loans. Everybody got cars and credit. And back then, that's not something that we really did then. But that was just, again, there's more and more creative ways to get people into debt. University, it, well, mortgage, okay. But then it was yeah. university car loans. They had to create new ways. That has collapsed under its own weight. It collapsed in 2008. People don't realize that this should have happened. What's happening right now should have happened in 2008, but they managed to kick the can down the road. They didn't even try to fix anything. BlackRock proposed that the central banks were to go direct this they anticipated a crisis in august 2019 um, and should there be a crisis that the central banks were to go direct as in cut out the commercial banks one month later you had the repo market crisis um it's like the overnight lent, money lent market between banks they have to balance their books every evening so they would lend between other banks and then pay it back the next morning that, that's that's all was going on normally it's less than two percent that night there was a mistrust in the market and it went up to 10% and the Fed had to stop, step in, start printing. That's when the money printing actually started. Like the real QE really started in earnest then. And then, so that's August, September. One month later, you have October, you have Bill Gates event 201. Yeah. And the crisis, so you had the crisis in September, the crisis, <laughs> then the COVID crisis, which BlackRock anticipated. Yeah, of course. And, and this is, I'm ex-financial services, so I've been in the mortgage game. So I've been involved in this debt spiral. I've, I've seen their fancy ways to, to create debt. Um, something that struck me, because I sold my business in 2008 and I had to sell it fast in a fire sale. I was lucky to get anything. I was actually really, really lucky to get anything at all. But we got out and we got something and I was quite happy with that because it gave me time to think. And it gave me time to look at why I knew nothing. Because I didn't know where money came from when I was in the mortgage game. Pathetic as it might seem. But a lot of people are like that. For three years, um, and I never was... You're not taught. You're not told. It's, it's yeah. a secret. Yeah. Well, I was really disappointed in myself. But watch this little video, because this was from 2008. And I think this is one of the, the rare times where you get to see a politician speaking the truth. On Thursday at about 11 o'clock in the morning, the Federal Reserve noticed a tremendous drawdown of uh, 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 money market accounts in the United States to the tune of $550 billion was being dr drawn out in a matter of an hour or two. The Treasury opened up its uh, 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 window to help they pumped $105 billion in the system and quickly realized that they could not stem the tide. We were having an electronic run on the banks. They decided to close the operation, close down the money accounts, and announce a guarantee of $250,000 per account so there wouldn't be further panic out there. And that's what actually happened. If they had not done that, th their estimation was that by 2 o'clock that afternoon, five and a half trillion dollars would have been drawn out of the money market system of the United States, would have collapsed the entire economy of the United States, and within 24 hours the world economy would have collapsed.
Now, we talked at that time about what would happen if that happened. It would have been the end of our economic system and our political system as we know it. And that's why when they made the point, we've got to act and do things quickly, we did. Yeah, that's where we are now. We yeah. were there again under the Obama administration. He had to inject one trillion into the economy <clears throat> or it collapsed. And that's where we are right now. People don't realize how fragile the economy is. And because we have a global economy, now they're pulling levers <clears throat> to try and save it until they have their new system in to try and keep it afloat. But yeah. the levers that they are pulling, they're, first of all, they run out of levers. Second of all, they're creating bigger problems with what they're doing with the supply chain. It's taken decades to get the supply chain running like well. Yeah, already. absolutely. And this so, is a live experiment. They, they, they think they know what they're doing. They think they can second guess the outcomes of all of this. Not that easy. This is this they, is out of control. This is why the free market it's it's not ideal but it's the best that we have because problems have to be dealt with immediately um and that's why socialism never works because governments tend to be ineffective and inefficient the they've let inflation run they had to close down the economy because the credit market had seized and they had to re relieve this and the only way that they could do this was to completely shut down the economy and they're opening it up in tiny bits, but they're, it's a creative collapse because it's open it up a little bit, shut it back down, open it up a little bit and shut it back down while all business is moving towards the multinationals, the Amazons, that kind of thing. If you had, have, well, if you had have told people, OK, the economy is going to collapse, we're going to have to shut everything down for a while, what would people have done? There would have been another run on the banks. Their central bank digital currency is to prevent any other run in the banks in the future. That's why they're pushing to get it in. It's impossible to do a run in the banks with central bank digital currency. So yeah, people people would have been scared and they would have done a run in the banks and things would have collapsed even quicker. So they had to create something over here while they did their creative collapse. Now with money printing, as you know, that is inflation. The consequence of that, inflating the money supply, the consequence of that is higher prices which is where we are now. They have, that's a tax. It's a hidden tax because of the transfer of purchasing power from the savers to the government. And with the Cantillion effect that where the money enters the market, it's worth more. So by the time it filters down to us peasants, it's worth nothing. There's a wealth heist going on right now. They have to let inflation run hot. They can't raise interest rates. If they even try to taper right now, the stock market will have a taper tantrum, everything will wobble and collapse. And when the stock market collapses, everything's going to collapse with it. So what I see them doing is they're going to let inflation run as hard as they can until um, they have transferred as much as they possibly can. Then they're going to have to raise interest rates to stem the inflation. Now, that's not going to have an immediate effect. You're talking 12 to 18 months before that clicks in and then can people service if those that have managed to keep their homes through everything can they service the debt of their home that's been overinflated at um maybe 20 percent interest rate so what's their move after that well if you go back to world war one what they did was they raised taxes to 90 percent if we move into a central bank digital currency system they can tax you and there's nothing you can do about it but it's a bit more sinister than that, isn't it? There's a lot more to this when you look at the coercion and no job, no job, and coming for the kids and all of that kind of stuff, Melissa. Well, I mean, they just announced in the UK, didn't they, that over 75s wouldn't be getting health checkups because of the stress in the NHS. And that's the demographic that we're supposed to be protecting because the average age of death with COVID is 81, 82. So these are the people that we are supposed to be protecting. And we're now saying to them that they don't need their health checkups. That same demographic is, well, you know that there's a demographic issue with pensions, with the baby boomers. These people are now about to cash in on their retirement. They have so many issues going on right now that I, I don't think there is no fixing it. They have to... 
I, I see what they're doing because they can't exp if they start explaining to people that will like stock buybacks um the stock market's completely overinflated if they start explaining to people that like say Tesla is two to three times overvalued at least and then people realize well where's where's my pension where's my pension hedged if and if they realize that the pensions are actually a Ponzi scheme if if they had a put out that it was an economic collapse I find the first video I do did was called lockdowns do work and um I got so much um messages about that I find that people didn't really care about their health but when you talk about their money so had they come out and overtly said look we're in an economic crisis right now um we need to shut everything down we need to reset the economy people would have started asking questions and there would have been a revolution people don't seem to care about their health but when it came to their finances I think that that would have been when there would have been pitchforks I've brought up in Glasgow in the 70s you know um something like 70 percent of people lived in council houses you know owning properties are relatively new thing in the grand scheme of things that based economy I have um a friend who um works at a homeless charity she volunteers and um a food bank and she has told me that the majority of people coming into the food bank are not what you would expect it's actually middle class people who are that snowed under with debt that there's nothing left to for groceries and it's a matter of like as you say one further notch up and everything collapses for them people stopped looking at the value of a house or car they just started looking at can i meet the minimum payments and they're now stuck in a trap where they're about to lose absolutely everything when this does collapse they have told you you will own nothing and be happy well how, how are they gonna are they just gonna tell you that you're going to own nothing and explain why you're going to know nothing because you and i both know how you're going to own nothing and um people a lot of people seem to think there's going to be a debt amnesty in weimar germany in the collapse even the mortgages the banks never fail they are always bailed out to some degree now they're doing the bail-ins this time but in Weimar Germany for mortgages mortgages were renegotiated against a gold value so people with with inflation it tends to be that um okay inflation is horrible for savers because your purchasing power is being inflated away it's good for those who hold assets because they're raising with inflation and it's great for those who are in debt the government um, or big businesses but by the time it filters down to us peasants again who are in debt with credit card um car loans mortgages they will just re they'll renegotiate our debt but they'll not re renegotiate the debt they'll get bailed out it's it's the way it it's always been the way because we let these for me psychopaths make the decisions for us well that, that what i said because i mean you look at the stock market, you know, the smart money can exit the stock market any time it wants, but it owns too much of it. If it exits too fast, it can create a panic, you know, but they can they can use their pension fund pals to, to buy their shares off them. Yeah, and that's what's you happening. Know? Uh, yeah. That's what's happening. So our pension funds are propping up these fake stock prices as the smart money exits and the sucker it's not even sucker pension money it's it's white collar crime melissa let's call it what it is the currency is in a race to the bottom right now so they are printing giving it out to their friends there it's all connected and they're taking that and they're actually putting that into tangible asset buying up real wealth that's not sitting in a bank they have transferred that and are buying up all the actual assets. Yep. Like hedge fund companies at the minute are buying up as many houses as they can. Yep. Lloyd's was a project generation. Lloyd's have decided to become landlords. So they know that the game is up. They're printing the money and buying. And meanwhile, we're being fooled into thinking that our house that was worth 
um, 500,000 is now worth 750,000. And we have this crazy idea that that's we're wealthier. People don't, people have attached a nominal value on wealth. That's not what wealth is. That's a representation of wealth. Wealth is goods and services in the economy and labor. That's what real wealth is. Because if your house is increasing value from 500,000 to 750,000, unless you're sitting in the same house. So if you have spent that money on it and you have improved it and you've put, I don't know, a swimming pool on it, yes, you are wealthier because you have improved um, the actual wealth and created more wealth around that. But and it going up in nominal price. And this is where people I think are falling behind with crypto. They're attaching a nominal price to it. They have us conned with a nominal price instead of stop thinking in terms of price and start thinking in terms of possession because all of these hedge fund companies are going for possession right now. They're not going for that. That's why they're not, they're throwing a little bit into Bitcoin because of control. But for actual, for people, we need to start thinking like they're thinking. If you want to get out of this, you need to start thinking and doing what they're doing. And that's why I keep telling people if they have money in the bank, it's decreasing in purchasing power. Like um, I think in Turkey this year, I think they've dropped 45% value in the lira i think 20 percent of that has been within the last month or two people are seeing inflation right now and the way it normally works is say that you needed a new tv you wouldn't buy it um to if, if you kind of your tv was on the blank you'd wait for it to die and then you buy a new one because you think well it's probably going to be cheaper if you know that everything's inflating people start buying in and getting rid of cash and that's when it tips over into hyperinflation and when by the time it tips over there's nothing left to buy people are trying, rushing to get rid of money and by what the hedge fund companies are doing is buying up all of the things that people would actually buy and then they're going to if you they're telling us you will buy no uh, you will own nothing and be happy you will rent what you need listen to what they're telling you they're telling that you're going to rent from them because they're going to own everything because they printed the money and bought up all the actual assets while we were sitting at home thinking it was great because we were being paid to sit at home. Any, but I don't understand how people didn't question being paid to stay at home. Property prices can only go one way. And the thing is, they will. what will happen is they will inflate and it'll be that nobody can afford to buy them. And then they'll drop. But by the time they drop, nobody would be able to afford to buy them anyway and it's very like with the carbon um credit system how they're going to get properties off of people well there's several ways that they're going to get properties off of people one is imposing <laughs> so if you're a renter they can um or if you have rental properties they can impose that you have to put in these fuel pumps that cost like 10 to thirty thousand. that's okay if you're black rock you can go in and furnish all of your homes with that because you're getting the money for free but for the peasants like myself who has rentals that's going to make it that i can't you know i can't i'm gonna to have to sell because i can't afford to do that that's the first port of call second port of call we know is taxes when they finish with inflation they're going to raise interest rates that's going to shake the tree and get a lot of people to have to sell because they can't afford the property no more then it's going to move on to taxes you have wealth tax that they're discussing um of course it's only for um the millionaires but newsflash rich don't pay taxes and income tax was originally for the millionaires that was only for the rich so you have wealth tax you have capital gains tax um you have unrealized capital gains tax that they're talking about that idea has been floated about so you have inflated people's say their home from um five hundred thousand to seven hundred and fifty thousand yeah, they're going to try and tax you on money you haven't even you've, you've earned on paper yeah that they have created that inflated price the nominal price but your home is still the same home and all of a sudden now you have to pay a tax on that two hundred and fifty thousand. if they can't if you manage to hold in there they're going to get you an inheritance tax they're going after generational wealth the in two yeah. if listen this mm. is their objective whether it's successful or not is up to the people if the yeah. people continue to acquiesce, yes, it will be successful. But so, their objective, they're making their objective clear. All of the information <clears throat> is there. 
to be read mm -hmm. on these um, NGO websites. A big part of their plan is the, the successful rollout of vaccine passports, data, whatever you want to call them. Tell me what's going on in Northern Ireland with regards to passports, businesses. How, how are they taking it? How has it been rolled out? What are the people saying? Okay, well, in the south of Ireland, it's complete compliance with them. Um, the So the only people that can get into the bars are those who have been, and this has gone on for several months right now, is the people who have um, been double jabbed. Um, the only people allowed in are those vaccinated, and the vaccinated are causing transmission. So we're closing again. So what people need to get into their head is they're not telling you, there's this obsession that if we just obey this one and this one and this one, we'll go back to normal. Normal is gone. That economy is gone. There's no way back there. No matter what, there's no way back there. They have the they said the new normal. Well, what is the new normal? The new normal is goalposts constantly being changed and you having to be obedient. That smells an awful lot like social credit system to me in China. Mm -hmm. that's where they're conditioning us to move us into. In Northern Ireland, we only have the passports in. They're only coming in to full effect next week. So um, what's happening here, um, because Northern Ireland is quite small, we have opportunity. There has been a legal team working on all of the legislation because what the media and government say misstates the law they are saying that it's up to the businesses to create this discriminatory door policy and make the inquiries. That's not what the law says. What the law states is that they have to make reasonable steps. So what is a reasonable step? A reasonable step can be that you take um, bookings and uh, you say to the customer, you know, just um, make sure that you have um, taking a ladder flow test or, a vac you know, that you've had your vaccine, taking a ladder flow test, or you can put a lanyard in the window saying all that. It's not up. It's the same as before, like with if somebody had the flu, it was their responsibility not to go into work. That puts the responsibility off, away from the businesses onto the individual patron of the businesses. And this is all legal. We, What they're working on is providing these businesses with all the legislation so that it's going to be the, um, sorry, decal in the window. And then they will have all the legislation in their businesses that they can download. This is being, it'll be all, all available in the next week. That should the police come in, you can show them what the legislation is. You can uh, discuss the Equality Act with them because what the government is actually asking these businesses to do is break the law. I think what you're pointing out is that the government, by sheer trickery and to create some plausible deniability in the future, is they're not actually asking them a break the law they're just making them think that they have to break the law but they've, they've given they, they get out of jail cards are, are there oh it's the underneath it does say please adhere to the equality act so that yeah. is in their guidelines yeah. but the media which is who the businesses are listening to are not mentioning this at all these the goal is to destroy small to medium businesses because in order to enact complete control you need to be dependent on the government so they have reduced all these jobs and they originally accounted for 60% of jobs, small to medium businesses. So the government has collapsed all these jobs. They're collapsing the businesses. Then therefore everybody becomes dependent on the government um, under this carrot of UBI. Um, it sounds fabulous the way they describe it. You get the money no matter what, doesn't matter. And you can go, you know, cause some people just want to be artists and you'll have the time to be at home being an artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fact is, if you do not produce, you cannot consume. If I had the money printer and I printed and give everybody a million pounds tomorrow, all put into every globally into everybody's bank account, how many people do you think they'd go to work to the next day? Very few. So how long do you think without production the economy would last? Because it would just be consumption. There wouldn't be production. So would they how do you think that they're going to move forward to that? Then they're you're at the mercy of the government. They can dictate where you are placed in the economy. They can decide that, you know what, you're going to dig dish, ditches. And if you don't, we can shut you off because central bank digital currency is programmable money. They have its individual monetary policy. They can decide how you 
spend your money. They can shut you out of certain aspects of the economy. They can decide what products, what services, and what information you receive. When one, if if they do get to implement this, they are planning to. I don't. There's no alternative. They don't have an alternative. The true alternative would be a cryptocurrency or a basket of cryptocurrencies. But right now, cryptocurrencies are speculative asset. Mm -hmm. I've been suspicious of them to begin with. But until they function as, because people say Bitcoin, nobody wants to sell it. Because why would you sell it when the idea is that, you know, it's worth well, 50,000 now, it's just going to be worth 75,000 in six months. So that's not how a currency functions. You can't have money that, that just money that just makes money like that. That's, that's not money. Yeah, that's not how it functions. And people, I think that's, if Bitcoin is sincere, that would be a way to collapse it. And the enemy of all cryptocurrencies is regulation. And we see now in Australia, the Treasurer of Australia has come out and said that they will be regulating um, cryptos and they're bringing in central bank digital currency. They plan to be cashless by 2022. If you notice that Sweden, everybody always talked about, well, Sweden, they didn't have to lock down, you know, and they they didn't have the transmission. And people focused on the um, medical side of Sweden. Sweden has been a cashless society for quite some time. So they didn't need to lock down. They're already on the hymn sheet. We just move, we're being moved to sing from the same hymn sheet. That's why yeah. Sweden never had to lock down. We've been right about a lot of things here you know we we started second guessing this playbook and you know how this agenda was going to roll out <clears throat> quite early on in the piece we knew it would get towards vaccines we knew that they'd get towards an element of mandatory vaccination we knew that there'd be a travel ban stroke implications that there would be a climate change agenda i said to my son in march last year my son lives in Australia, Melissa, he's uh, 22. I said to him, there's a very good chance I might not see you again for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. He said, don't be silly, Dad. I said, two years later, I've still not seen him. You know, I'm used to spending three or four months a year in Australia. We've guessed how things were going to go. From what do you see coming next, all of us? What do we see coming next? And how do you plan accordingly? Klaus Schwab said that we have, there's a small window of opportunity. For this reset so the the longer that we are defiant that window is closing because the rest of the people who go along to get along i don't listen everybody has a fight in them and this is my fight um so i don't judge other people for this not being their fight because their fight could be something completely different that I, i'm not involved in this is my fight but for the long for as long as we resist and rebel against it it makes that window narrow, more and more narrow. And then the narrower it gets, the more people realize something's up here. So the longer that we can hold it back. I there, I know their objective. Their objective is these passports. Then they'll be held back a little bit. The passports will be held back a little bit, but they'll say that the passports are, what they're actually for is, should this happen again? You know, we need everybody in these passports because then we'll know everybody's location and when we can say, OK, anybody who's been to that building and we can close them all down. So they'll create this narrative of why the passports are actually a good idea because their current narrative of transmission, there's absolutely no scientific data to support that. In fact, the contrary. So they'll create a new narrative for these. So they'll pull back a little bit and then they have you on these passports. Then they're going to push that into a digital ID. So your passport will be an app on your phone. This will be your, all your medical data. As I say, you have the Encompass um, program that's going on here. I'm sure there's something similar. It's at the Epic. Um, that's from America. That's already implemented in America. Then it'll be linked to, it, there's already talk of central bank digital currency. They'll bring in central bank digital currency. They'll try to. I think the benefit that we have right now, and it's a matter of time before we're all shut down from the internet, the information that they have, we have a lot of it. This is the benefit of the internet. The, yes, they needed the internet to get to the masses, to manipulate the masses, but there's a portion of us that are genuinely inquisitive for information. 
and have that information. So I think that um, they will bring in their central bank digital currency. It's not going to be immediately a move to, once they get that in, then the tiptoeing starts again. Then it'll be incentives. You know, like is it in China, you can get like 50% off your groceries if you um, have a high social credit score, or you can get like really low interest rate mortgages. Whereas in the D categories, um, you're not allowed to participate in society. You have to be reprogrammed. You can get your, lose your job, lose your qualifications. So, but it'll be a tiptoe into that. Now, one of our one of our members actually asked a wee question. What about if you own your property car outright? outright? Can that be taken away? Now, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's an interesting question because it gives you an insight into the way a lot of people are thinking. That's that's not an uncommon thought to begin through people's minds just out someone in a a 500 grand house melissa mm -hmm. you could argue they say they've got a 500 grand house with a 250 grand mortgage yeah you know they're sitting on 250 grand worth of equity and now they could buy a nice little sh shack somewhere mm -hmm. <laughs> a little cottage a little wooden log cabin they could buy a bit of land they could grow their own food that, that seems far more appealing to people having been through two years of this nonsense. They might not have thought of that before, but right now that might sound like a little slice of heaven and earth for people. Now in that situation, if you sold your house at 500 grand and you got that money and you you, you paid back your 250, mm -hmm. then there's a slightly different outcome. It's you'll owe nothing, but you'll be happy because now you don't have a mortgage and you own your wee log cabin and you own your wee bit of land and you're making 40% of the food that goes into your belly every week in your garden, you know? So can can they come for that too? You know, are, 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 we, are, we, are, are we an all out war with these people? Um, for me, I own my home, I write. Um, for what I have done is I would be aware that they're going to try and come at me for taxes. Um, there is, I've never, I need to look into it because there is the option of putting your home into trust, you know, so that they can't take it off you. But that's what the rich do. But it's something I haven't had the time to actually look into. Well, that's why you need to play their games, isn't it? Because if they, if they can do it, then we can do it. But what they do is they make it financially um, affordable if you're super wealthy. But so if something costs um, 100,000 to do, but you have you're a multi-millionaire, it's worth it. If something costs a hundred thousand to do and your house is only worth five hundred thousand, this is how they create these loopholes for the wealthy. Yeah. I am prepared what I have done, I um did have a couple of um rentals. I probably would have bought more. I'm out of property right now. Um I'm I'm keeping the rentals that I have, but other than that, I'd be out of um, property, I wouldn't go deeper into it. Um, the ones that I would have would be fine. Um, they're not, you know, not a big expense and they'll always garnish and they're almost paid for anyway. I have savings in precious metals. So should these taxes come in, I can hold back for as long as I can. Precious metals, people don't really under, it's not an investment. Your home isn't an investment because you need somewhere to live. People think that their home is an investment. It doesn't matter what it's worth because you need somewhere to live. Precious metals are not an investment. Precious metals are wealth preservation and a hedge against inflation. So instead of holding money that is the purchasing power of it is leaving on a daily basis because the money printing hasn't stopped. If you buy into now precious metals at the minute, very flat. They have been flat in an everything bubble. Stock market, all-time highs. Crypto, all-time highs. Um, even art, all-time highs. Precious metals, completely flat. Highly manipulated market, but all markets are manipulated. They have to keep them low in price because a high gold price indicates a weak economy. That's where I have my savings so that I can get out of dodge if they do start with the wealth taxes <clears throat> if you have people have saved all their lives and bought and bought and bought and bought and bought but if they a one percent 
wealth tax would wipe everybody out and they'll say it's for millionaires but in an inflationary economy i mean in zimbabwe everybody's millionaires in venezuela everybody's million but it's worth nothing so be careful of what they're doing when they're creating inflation um, um, do you the that they're bringing in do you think i mean things like gold and i get it gold and silver you know, it's, you, you, unless instead of having, you get one house you live in, that's an investment, or it's a, the roof over your head. You know, if you get more wealth, where do you, where do you put it? You know, in the past you might have put it into a pension fund. It doesn't not attract me yeah. right now, at all. Gold. Now, what what makes you think the gold that you might have is valued at what? you know, the tangible value. Do you think it's just because the price has been pushed down so low that they're, because they want to own it, they don't want it to be a runaway success. They, they don't want to see gold going like Bitcoin because then everybody will want some gold. Well, first of all, you buy something when it's cheap, you don't buy it when it's high and gold and silver are very cheap at the minute. Um, Poland have put in an order for another 100 tonnes of gold. China have been banned. China have about 40,000 tons of gold. Not that they admit to, um, but no gold ever leaves China. Um, India would have a high level of gold. Russia can back their back, they have 23% in gold. Central banks hold gold, the IMF hold gold. So again, look what they're doing. Now, um, as I said before, there is the potential for um, the SDR to be the new reserve currency. The dollar is not going to be the reserve currency in 10 years, if it lasts that long. It's it's done for, we're moving into a new reserve currency. Mm -hmm. The SDR is also printing another money layer that nobody's really talking about. Their positioning, again, objective, whether it's successful or not, is another thing. I think that if anything, this has taught us to move away from globalization. They're going to, in, Go, it's always, not always, um, nearly 5,000 times, 4,800 times when a fiat currency has collapsed and being a new currency has come in, it's tethered to gold. It's tethered to something. Gold comes out of the ground um, at the same rate as population increase. So there's a finite amount of it. Ask yourself, why are they holding gold? For me, cryptocurrency is a great way of getting money out of the economy. Yeah, there's a lot of money to be made in it. But, I think there's money in the way. I don't think everybody's got crypto yet, so I think they want more sucker money in, and it could be a little ride up for a while. Maybe I don't it, know. It well, I would say that there'll be. I can see that it'll. That I reckon around eighty to hundred thousand. They'll let Bitcoin get to that because they want to hold the money out of the economy. So they'll have to let it. They keep on, um, setting it away. So it's down. down it's very volatile, but that's deliberate because it's. There's the idea that nothing goes up in a straight line. But gold can never return to zero. Crypto can return to zero. For me, crypto is a brilliant blockchain is the future. They want to have everything on a blockchain. So they got these really intelligent people in to figure out how to put everything on a blockchain. And that's what crypto's function is serving right now. And then they can come in and completely regulate it. And they have all the tech to put absolutely everything on a blockchain. They, it's a it's control mechanism um, that's what the blockchain actually provides for them and they have complete control they want to take a lattice from seed to know what field it was in what row what position what truck it went on what supermarket it went to i don't know about you but i don't that's that's not something that's necessary for me that's necessary for them in a complete control people are you're right moving towards people are starting to really what they didn't anticipate in locking people up First of all, they locked up critical thinkers, and that was not a good idea. Second, people started to think, what is it all about? People need to have an honest conversation about death. And I think what the problem is, is from you are four years of age, it's five days on, two days off, five days on, two days off. So school, work, five days on, two days off. How long have you to do that for until you die? Because these pensions of people going and retiring in Florida, some very few will, but if you're the last one into that, you're going to lose. So people are now asking themselves in the lockdown, what, I hate my job. I hate my job. So why, 
what is life about? They have given people that opportunity. And there's so many people now that are kind of want to move towards an alternative lifestyle off mm -hmm. simpler lifestyle. We're, we're losing the consumer economy is gone anyway. See this bye, bye, bye. That's dead. This new economy. Yeah, that's that's dead. I mean, I used to buy a lot of suits and shirts and ties and shoes. Zero chance of that happening. Now. Absolutely yeah, none. That's that economy. That's for all of us. That's gone for all of us. It's back to how it used to be that there's a select few that would be buying those things. So now people are starting to think, well, what is my life moving forward? And they want a simpler life and they are looking. Like I have started growing. Well, I have an orchard and I have, Very nice. have chickens this past few years. But I'm like, I've got a greenhouse and I'm looking at growing my own food. I don't look at it. It's how you frame things. It's not about fear of what they're going to do. For me, it's, I think that's an interesting thing to learn how to do. And frame it in that context. Instead, I think, I think whether people, I, I, I don't really, I, I spoke about this recently. I think it was 1950 or something, 40% of all UK food production came out of people's gardens. Mm-hmm. Now, that, that's quite considerable. That's a terrible habit that we got out of. You know, we, they, they, they must have worked really hard to stop us doing that amazing, or having that amazing skill and passing it on, because it never got passed on from my parents to me. No, and they also had larders. Um, Absolutely. A, a guy I know, <clears throat> his mom is, I think, 92. She still does her gardening she they, they were he was he's in his um 60s he um grew up eating mostly out of the garden this is something that we have lost and and it's even worse than that it's not even that we're not growing anything by ourselves um we don't have any food in the cupboard people yeah. just, you know it's eating out all the time I, <laughs> well, I said, I'm, I'm the fifth generation in this house my father grew up in this house without electricity and running water. There's a well, you know, that's. that's and it worked. It, it worked. Changed. Yeah. But that's how much change things have changed in one generation, two generations. That was the debt based economy. The debt based economy created all this and everybody's wealthy because we are all wealthy. But now. The, um, these multinationals are moving into poorer countries and moving into Indonesia and um, India um, to reduce their costs, to make more profits. And they are creating middle classes in other economies. These middle classes, now say in India, um, I think a billion people in India don't have air conditioning. Well, now that they have a little bit of money, they want that. So there's a, this is where the energy crisis is coming from as well. We we don't appreciate how convenient and cheap energy is now. And that's why I say energy is... But it's another thing they can ramp up. Mm -hmm. they, they can turn up the price of that electricity and, and are to a certain extent and gave us a little taste of no petrol and no, you know, uh, sky high gas and electric bills. You know, you, you can see what they can do at the flick of a switch. We are going like that. And people that think that they're going to go back up that hill, that hill is crumbling. As you're walking down it, it's crumbling behind you. There's no going back. And people need to realize that if you keep on walking, you're only going down. So, and there's no, there's no, it'll get to the point for me when central bank digital currency comes in, that's a difficult road to get out of. When we allow that, that's it. It's it's going to be very difficult to get out of that. That's going to take a generation or two to find their way out of that. And well, they will because they, this is we've been here before in history. Yeah, absolutely. It's these people that you can't trust, though. Like, can you trust them to be in charge of this phone that's going to give me access to the world? I, I, I have to trust these people who are robbing us, jabbing us, threatening us, you know? putting the army on the streets to us potentially and I've got to trust them in my life and give it over to them on a phone I just I don't I don't think so we need to we really need to look at these other alternatives if you take away if you change it from um jobs to central bank digital currency so instead of forcing and mandating jobs you're forcing central bank digital currency 
because that's the real goal. They're just going to switch this around. They did it in the French Revolution. It was the Assignat. If you tried to trade in anything but the Assignat, you went to jail. So that's what they're going to do. It's going to just be switched from that. And what I find with people who hold cryptocurrency, what they're going to find is the same um, feeling that we are having right now with people just allowing it to happen um, with the regulation and the mandates. They, that's going to happen with cryptocurrency. It'll just be, they can just, I mean, in the IRS, last year's IRS um, papers, you had to tick a box if you had traded in any um, virtual currencies. If you failed to tick that box and you had, that's a felony charge. Now you combine that with um, Coinbase, um, they went after Coinbase, took them to court. They actually give up 20 to 30,000 of their most um, prolific users. So they're reducing the custodians of these cryptocurrencies and then they can go after you. So if you have um, 100,000, so you got 10,000 worth of um, crypto and now it's worth 100,000 and they tell you that, um, well, they're going to tax it at 90%. Well, then you're back down again because how do you buy something? If I wanted to buy... Well, you'd have to sell and you'd have to sell at the same time as everybody wants to sell. So now there's a race to the bottom to get your money out. Yep. They have manipulated that market. They have been manipulating. Um, Bitcoin particularly has done boom, bubble, bust three times a drop of like 80% and the last time was a drop of like around, what, um, 40%. The 2017 um, bubble, it, it dropped from 20,000 down to 3,000. Um, Christopher Giancarlo admitted that uh, that was done under the Trump administration with selling um, futures. Oh, they are master manipulators at every single market. So if people think that um, Bitcoin can be decentralized, unless the people get on board and use it as a currency, then it can. And even with the internet, they can't actually shut down the internet because the infrastructure is there. So the, the internet can't be tapped into that. There, I see that as how, how it's going to be. But what tends to happen in these tightenings, um, black markets emerge, leads to civil unrest, and that's when the revolution happened. But we're right here trying to warn people, listen, we're heading towards a cliff. What do you want to do? Do you want to wait until you go over the cliff and see who survives and gets up and starts climbing up again? Or do you want to avoid the cliff? So the revolution is already happening within us when they realize they will jump off and it'll grow and grow so a lot of people i know right now i know for me i'm tired um and a lot of people are feeling exhausted they're feeling hopeless but this never works because good people are bad people are actively bad these psychopaths are actively bad in their plans. Yeah, good yeah. Tend to be passively good. We don't do anything. We don't. We're not active in our goodness. We're just in the good people will step forward and are becoming more active. Because I know that you're the same as me. You're not doing it for yourself. You're you're going to be fine. You can live your days and be fine. You know that this isn't really going to kick in because when central bank digital currency comes in, it'll be then back to tiptoeing into um, a level of control. Nothing ever grows in darkness. Nothing can take root and grow in darkness. That's why there's always a balance. So it tips one way and then it tips the other way. We're tipping in the wrong direction right now for future generations. But no matter what, future generations will tip it back. But all that we can try and do is not let it tip, as try and hold it back as much as we can so that to lessen their battle. That's for me all I can say. And I think wake up to the fact that you have delegated your thinking to mainstream media, you have delegated your um, your finances to um, pension funds that you actually don't even know where your money is and you've dedicated your children, or, your, or delegated your children's education to indoctrination camps and daycare centers. We have to take responsibility back for our thinking, for our own finances and for our parenting of our children these good people that you talk about employing each other you know no discrimination mm -hmm. yeah you know like old normal only better yes 
I don't see I don't see us as the breakaway society though. I see them as the breakaway society. They're going to try something new. It's not us. You know, they're they're going to to try their new normal and their you know passports and their jobs to go anywhere. You know, we're we're basically going back to a simpler lifestyle and saying you know well we're happy with our lot. You know, we we might not be going to the the same pubs and restaurants. We'll be going to different ones. We might have fewer choices, but the choices we have will be good. Yes. What's wrong with me? I think that we're going to have more people coming on board with our way of thinking because right now people are still holding on to going back to normal. Then when they lose hope of going back to normal, they start to go, well, do I like it right here? No, I don't. And then they come on board with the other way of thinking. There is, a, because they never addressed the issue in 2008, they're forced, their hand is forced right now to rush forward. I mean, there's an IMF paper, 50 page document in what, 2015, detail in central bank digital currency. So it's relatively new. They're not ready for it. For me, you know, I know that there's a, these big master plans and everything, but as I say, it's just, it's humans making these decisions and you can never account, they never account for all the variables. But. I think that's why it's moving as fast as it has done as well, because the, the artificial intelligence is saying, well, what's what's holding you back here? Roll it out, roll it out, you know. But artificial, it's only as good as the information that goes into it. Now, it can be quicker than the human brain. Like, So it can it can watch, say, chess players, and then it can beat the grandmaster of chess, yes, because it, has, it can calculate every single scenario in a split second, which the human brain can't do. But if you asked AI to cure cancer, AI is as likely to just wipe out the human race because that would cure cancer. So it, it so for starters, it doesn't have a moral compass. It's only as good as the information. Like they're trying to train AI for driving trucks right now, but they're going to still need truck drivers to take it that extra mile. But they're now talking about virtual truck drivers where the truck driver is at home driving the truck via AI, but all that time, the truck driver hiring the AI with the information, with the data that mm -hmm. it can use to no longer need. So people are doing themselves out of a job. Same with these GPs, they've done themselves out of a job because now you have, is it um, Amazon working towards, they're kind of gauging your emotion, they're um, saying you, you can be diagnosed now online We've been taught that if you have a rash that's like in a photo, well then why do we need a GP? Then everything can move online. People don't seem to realize that they're doing themselves out of a job and it's not good for humanity to get up and have something to do. But as a consequence of that, like we say, people are starting to look for alternative lifestyles because people still want to get up and have something to do for a day. People don't want to sit and watch because everybody knows that when you're off for like two weeks at Christmas or a week at Christmas, you're kind of ready to go back and you, you enjoy yeah it. you need to yeah you need something there's only so much tv and screens you can watch before you just you tune out mm -hmm. so i it never works it's it's a concept it's an objective um because of the current system they've lost control when you lose control of the money currency works really really well when nobody questions it it is like the wizard of oz but when people realize that it's all fake then it falls apart really really quickly and that's where we are now people are starting to question well if they started to question bitcoin their pension whether or not they're going to get it their health service whether or not they're going to get it their mm -hmm. you know an actual retirement their their property and is it actually worth anything and their job and you know where where food all your what's valuable to you changes completely if you look at those things through a, a different lens. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing. I think that the way I, I don't think that we have been on a good path. Um, what's important about you is external. You know, it's what car you drive, what handbag you're carrying, what watch you're wearing, how much your house is worth. Um, that's not, for me, I, my actually, my degree, I studied theology at Trinity. Um, so that was my real way of thinking. Um, I think that you have two bank balances. Um, you have your financial bank balance. 
and you need to take care of it and you have to be in control of it and not delegate it to anybody else. That's your responsibility. But you also have like a spiritual bank balance because if you want to know what you own, die tomorrow, see what you own. So if, you, if we kind of taught children that you have two bank balances to be responsible with money, that it is hard earned, that um, value, don't buy things that you don't want, you don't need, but also to focus daily on your spiritual bank balance. So do kind things for others, be a good person, raise who you are in this world. You're not here to pay off a mortgage and die. It, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense. I, my, it is, I do feel that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and everything has distracted us from this. And this is an opportunity for us to really have a life experience instead of getting to, I think that this is what the issue is with people being afraid of death because they've got to the age of 60, 70 retiring. And they're like, is that it? Is that my life experience? So I just wait sit around and wait to die. Every day should be viewed as a gift. I'm not at all fearful. There is, fear is the lowest frequency. Love is the highest frequency. So if you're coming, operating from fear, that's not a good life experience for you. So no matter what happens, like I said about the FEMA camps, you know, people are scared of these FEMA camps. He says, sounds class. I think I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the crack. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, don't be afraid of anything. I'd be like that Hogan's Hogan's Heroes, a bit like Hogan's Heroes. You're too young to remember that. Oh, a bit older than well, you. we're not getting out of here alive anyway. This is not our home. So just enjoy it when you are here. Don't operate from fear. I, I, I see this as a great opportunity. For me, what I'm out here trying to do is warn people to jog them into thinking about it. And that's what, I, like I say, I haven't watched the video that I, um, the, um, it's a Rylan Media video, the Iconoclast one. I've never actually watched that because it was recorded. I recorded it once and I kind of had structured what I wanted to say and um, well, loosely. And then the lighting was off or whatever, technical. And then I recorded it straight after. And I couldn't really remember, had I just said that in this one or the other one? So I kind of went off the cuff on it. Um, so I haven't actually watched <laughs> what I said. But whatever it is, it resonated with a lot of people. And I think it's because people are starting to, like I say, it was like half a million views in six days. 12 months ago, you wouldn't have, you would have got a couple hundred views. And mostly people telling you that you're crazy and get help. So people are realizing because it's always about power, money, control. It always boils down to these people do not care about us. If you had asked people two years ago, do you think the government care about you? They'd say no. When you but people are so bought into it. Like when you say, do you think it's okay then that we are not giving health checkups to over 75s? Do you think that's okay? Because is it, how many lives are you willing to lose to save one life? You know, you have to get this balance together and we have all the data's in. There's no denying the data anymore. And um, we have a freedom of information here in Northern Ireland. I'm sure you have something similar there. Over the 15 months up until I think July 31st, 165 people died exclusively from COVID, no um, comorbidity issues. Another freedom of information, how many people died of flu? Zero. How many people normally die from flu? Average of 11 per month. It's mm -hmm. figures. So all the information is in. It can be proved and it will be proved. There's a judicial review that it will be proved in a court of law. But by the time that goes through with everything shut down, it's too late. Yeah, and they know that they, 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 they've they planned around the timing that it takes and mm -hmm. how much they can get done within that time. Yeah. Any final thoughts to people who are watching this who are looking? You, you can't give them, you've given them a lot of answers tonight, a lot of food for it's thought. Not, but... I would say to everybody, listen, I'm just some woman on the internet. So um, do your research, but definitely start looking into things, start First of all, look into your finances, but there's, I, I do bracketed, I write a list every day and it's, um, I deal with something spiritual, I deal with something physical, I deal with something uh, financial and I deal with something mental. So I learn something every day. I um, touch base with my spiritual side, I keep connected with that. I keep an eye on my finances and I 
go for a walk, do a workout. That's every day. So start thinking about your life. Break your life down and focus on it every day. Think about why you're here. Think about how your finances, think about are based. Have you delegated them out? Have you got money in the bank? Is that safe? Start looking at everything. Take your eyes off of Netflix and plug back into your life and you'll be the better for it and you'll enjoy it and you'll definitely not get to the end. And for those right now who are refusing um, to take part in this, because I, I haven't, I've never worn, I, sorry, I did wear a mask. My mum was in a nursing home and died um, last year in May and they were very supportive to get me in. You know, they tried everything to make sure that I could get in to be with her. So I completely complied because they were on my side and mm -hmm. I, I did comply then. But other than that, I, I will not partake in the lie. People need to hold strong right now. It's going to get very difficult over the next six months to a year. They're going to make it increasingly difficult on us. There will be sacrifices. So, so you can't go to the movies. You can't maybe go to these things. We'll have to fight them in court, but we will ultimately win. And don't give up now because I, I promise people that fight if you fight now, you will never regret it. If you give up, you will regret it because it's if we don't hold back from this, the only thing stopping this coming in is the people who won't comply because we know it's going to be lying. So yeah. make the sacrifice right now. And it's a small sacrifice. Like I say, men have died in wars. Uh, so we have to say no and not go to the movies. I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Well, listen, Melissa, thank you very much. Melissa, you are a star. It's been a pleasure. We'll maybe do one again soon, but it, yeah. it was it was my pleasure to, to catch up with you. And thank you to everyone who stuck with us through the time. And thank you, everybody. Have a great night.